Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on Build It Projector. My name is Maxim Isabel, Senior Application Engineer at Build It, and I'll be your presenter for this webinar. It should take about 20 to 25 minutes. Before we move on to the main course, I'd like to cover a couple of housekeeping points. First, if you have any questions during the webinar, use the Q&A button on the right, and I'll try to answer them as we go. If not, I'll answer them at the end or in a follow-up email. Also, it's recorded, and it may be made publicly available in the future. So assembly can be complex. Whether you're dealing with bracket placement, rib and stringer placement, click bonds and standoffs, paint templating and masking, uh, factory floor layout for production, uh, production lines, fencing and robotic station layouts, ship, yachts, boat building, and marine construction, railways. The list goes on and on. And you yourself might be thinking uh, of, a, of an assembly process in the workplace that has a certain complexity. What makes an assembly so complex? It boils down to essentially two things, the sheer quantity of information and also the nature of the information. There are annotations, there's information on which method, uh, which tool to use, how to use it, uh, where. There's a specific sequence that needs to be followed. There's a, the position of the object and how it's rotated. There are many ways to deal with um, properly assembling your, your, your assembly. There's, there's templates, jigs, measurement devices, and at Buildit, we're very familiar with with this because a lot of our clients use Buildit to, uh, to assemble jigs using trackers, especially. There's also six degree of freedom tracking devices. It tracks all three translations and rotations. Uh, and there's even the tape measuring method. And with every method, we're trying to improve the same things. Uh, increasing throughput, reducing training time, and reducing non-conformances. And there's three components of the assembly process that I want to focus on in this presentation as we look at more modern ways of managing these components. And that's following a proper sequence, having the special instructions in a timely manner, and also having an accurate and precise positioning. Augmented reality is a technology that's emerging both in manufacturing and also for consumers. There are technologies there that uh, we're already familiar with. There's the Google Glass, which as a matter of fact, it was originally aimed at businesses and for manufacturing. The, uh, the management got excited by this technology and tried to market it to us consumers. And as we all know, that, that really flopped. But that's not the end of Google, the Google Glass. They're actually uh, redirecting their efforts back into manufacturing. But that's not exactly what I would call um, real or full augmented reality. Something that's closer to that is the Microsoft HoloLens, which is the image that you see at the bottom. And that I find is an exciting technology that we're gonna be able to use in our own living room. In this case, this technology is aware of the shape of its surroundings. Unlike the Google Glass, which is uh, it's a tiny screen uh, that you see on the side of your periphery, this one is aware of the shape of things and really maps uh, 3D images onto that. And also, I thought an interesting um, example would be the middle one, which is uh, a projector that, that, that detects the shape of the sandbox under it, and it'll color code it, uh, making it blue when it's below, uh, quote unquote, sea level, and it will also color code the peaks uh, red. So you get this real-time topographical map. You can shift the sand around, and you'll get uh, a new color map. And so the, the difficulty or the complexity right here, again, is really the device needs to be aware of the shape and the position of the ob object that it's projecting on. If you take your conference room projector, for example, that only works on a flat surface. If you tilt or warp the surface, the projection changes, and that's not good. So that projector has no spatial awareness. Now, Faro, our parent company, is taking significant steps in that direction. Uh, releasing two products, the Tracer M, which I'm going to get more into uh, in, in, in more detail later, and then there's the Visual Inspect, which runs on a tablet and detects whether a component of your assembly is missing. 
visual inspect as well as the other technologies that we saw earlier uh, in the on the consumer side they are focused or they use the device's camera and while the device camera are, are getting better with with uh, more resolution and even and the software also is getting more sophisticated we still don't have a lot of precision in terms of positioning and that's really important in in manufacturing so if you need high precision, there's really one uh, product that can fulfill that need, and that's laser projectors. And that's been used on shop floors for a long time already. They have the ability to guide an assembly process, and also it, it accurately locates and orients components. And it, it makes, the manu makes manufacturing a lot more efficient. So at this point, I wanted to ask you guys a question. Um, are you currently using a laser projector. So we have uh, on the right, you should see a button um, that says a new poll is live and there's a blue dot on it. If you open that, that sidebar, you're gonna have a few options. I'm gonna bring that up on my side. And so uh, the possible answers are um, yeah, all the time. We have one, but we aren't using it much yet. We just got one, we're looking to get one. We're not sure if we want to get one yet. Or wait, what's a laser projector? So cast your votes. If, you're, if your vote is the last one, you might be in the wrong webinar. But uh, we are going to cover a little bit of, of uh, what's a laser projector in the next five minutes. So you should stick around, actually. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that there. Uh, you guys can, can take your time, I guess, to vote. I'm going to get to the next slide, and I'm going to come right back to it. So the Faro Tracer M is a 3D laser projector that provides a virtual template for operators so that they can quickly and accurately position components with confidence. They've been in the game from, from decades ago. They're rugged and reliable, and Faro recently acquired the technology so you can benefit from Faro's extensive and international support system. It eliminates tooling templates and tape measures. It's the sharpest laser and has the highest positional accuracy on the market. The, uh, the, and the lines that it projects can be as thin as half a millimeter. I'm just gonna have a look at the poll. Look at the results. Okay, so a lot of you use it all the time. Some use it not so much, and some are not sure if you need one yet. And there's some people who are not sure what's a laser projector. So I'll get <laughs> right into that. So virtual templating, well, 3D laser projectors project a, a glowing image of the part component uh, or, or the location directly on your work surface. And this, by, by making the, by glowing, by projecting a glowing image, uh, you get an accurate guiding template. And also it can be seen by anybody with a naked eye. So unlike other augmented reality technologies, this one is excellent for collaborative tasks. There's no need for physical templates or hard tooling, so it's cheaper. On top of that, it's faster, and it's also more intuitive to use. How does it do those projections? Well, there's a, there's a laser that shoots the beam, which first bounces off of two mirrors before uh, exiting the machine. And these two mirrors are mounted on these galvanometers. And these galvanometers are able to steer the mirrors at very high speeds, high frequencies, so that the line moves so fast uh, that it, it, it will go through the full pattern maybe 60 times a second. So at that speed, it's indistinguishable from a line. And just to give you kind of a, um, a comparison, most movies on films are projected at 24 frames per second, or so 24 hertz. So that's less than half of the, the typical speed of that kind of projection. The, uh, the range of this technology is 15 by 15 meters or, 30, uh, or 50 by 50 feet. If you have something that's bigger than that, what you can do is you can connect multiple projectors simultaneously. And also the beam itself stays focused, whether you're projecting it from 6 feet to 50 feet or 1.8 meters to 15.2 uh, meters. Now, before moving on to the software side of things, I wanted to go over more examples to help you see how it might apply to you. Uh, so at the top, 
we see a weld block placement where the user simply needs to line up the edges. And then there's hole drilling, which uh, you can see there's there the crosshairs that tell you exactly where to drill the holes. You can have text projections with special instructions. So for example, for the hole drilling, we could project which drill bit to use. And finally, you can use it for verification to make sure that the part is properly positioned. In all these cases, uh, you get an increase in throughput. And since it's, especially since it's so much simpler than using a, a tape measure, for example. Uh, and so therefore the training is reduced as it tells you the right info at the right time. The errors are also reduced as it's easy to see when a projection doesn't line up. So now the build it projector software that was released only a couple months ago and it's a single dedicated platform. So it's not an add on and we make the whole process a breeze, including the installation. So you work in an uncluttered workspace and the workflow is really simplified and streamlined. It's also stable and, ro and robust. The vast majority of the code behind projector is shared with our flagship flagship metrology software. That some of you might know, uh, build it, which is, uh, which has been developed over decades since the early 90s, and it's been used day in and day out on the shop floor. So as you can imagine, we've grown into a mature and stable software. Also, our, our geometry engine is the same as the one used by uh, Deso's Katia software. We also support all major CAD formats, uh, Katia, NX, AutoCAD, just to name a few. Now, let me walk you through the basic steps and explain what they're for. And then I'll do a live demo just to show you uh, exactly uh, how easy it is. So the first step is that you add a projector. So to do that, you simply add the IP address of each of the projectors you're going to be connected to. As I mentioned before, you can connect to more than one projector, uh, especially s since they have a, a line of sight you might need to use multiple projectors and project on all sides simultaneously, kind of like in the screenshot at the, at the bottom. Once you have your projectors, step two, add your alignment points. As, as I mentioned, your device needs to know where it is and it needs to, to, to know where it is in relation to the 3D object. So in order to do that, it uses alignment points. And alignment points are retroreflective alignment targets. You can see it, the, the small image in the, the middle. Uh, so it scans these targets. And when you have, so in the example on the right, we have six re, uh, retroreflective targets. It has enough information to position itself, to align itself. And finally, third step, add your projections. Now there's two main ways to do it. The first is to select them straight off of your surfaces. You can simply select you click on the surface, it'll find the nearest edge, and you can add that to your projection. Second option, you can use the curves and the points that are in your model if you already created them in your um, CAD design software already. And once, you, once you've done that, what you can do is you can take your curves and, and, um, and group them into what we call layers. And they, these can be dragged and dropped in the proper sequence. Uh, and once you, you've done that, then you press a button and it'll create a, uh, a database that you can log into with Ray Tracer Operator. That's the software that runs the Tracer M. It's a simple interface. It's packed with features. Uh, it supports multi-projector arrays. It uh, allows you to do remote triggering. So we're using a retro reflector by flashing it into the, the path of the beam. And it'll use that as a trigger to do things like moving on to the next layer or uh, only projecting what's near the uh, the operator. You can also have a detailed log of activity. So if you want to know exactly what how how the um, the operation went, uh, so to speak, well you have uh, you have everything timestamped right there, and each layer can be displayed individually. So now we're at the part uh, for the live demo from start to finish of doing a, a projection plan. Um, for those of you who are familiar with, with projection planning, I want you to think of how long that usually takes to do that, that, that projection. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an example workflow. And I guess you, you'll get to compare it to what you're more familiar with. 
let's get that open. So that's, uh, that's build a projector. I have nothing in here right now, and I'm going to import my model. As I mentioned before, we have a, a very long list of all of the major CAD softwares. Uh, we're in this case, I'm going to be importing a build it file. And once that's imported, I'm going to follow the same three steps that I mentioned. So under the projection menu, you have add projector, add alignment points, add projections. So starting with adding a projector. Here's the first one. I'm going to add a second one as well. By the way, these are the, the default IP addresses. So I'll just and the, add two at the end. So I'll have two projectors in this one. Next, I'm going to create my alignment points. So I'll go right here. And what I can do is I can click where I want to have the point and then click apply. Hold on, let me just make sure. Yes. And it'll create the point. Once you've created uh, enough points, get one more. We'll see is they're all added right here. And you're ready to go to the th third step, which is to create your projections. So in this case, I'm going to show you simply how to pick them off of your surfaces. So for example, right here, I have a square. I can select that. I can give it the name that I want, call it square. Um, and then click apply. I can do that here as well. Pentagon, it's that easy. If you want to just have just part of it, so maybe just this line right here, I can click closer to it and click apply. So I've already built my projection right here, my Pentagon, uh, that single line, and I can drag and drop it. I can put that over here. I can group some if I wanted to. All right, so create a layer from that. And once I'm ready, then I can click on uh, add to ray tracer database. Usually you need six alignment points and then it'll ask you which folder you want to add it in. So I'm going to create a new folder and click OK. And it's that simple. It, it'll create it into, uh, into, the, into the folder and then you can use the, the software uh, for, for ray trace. Uh, we'll use ray tracer for tracer M. Uh, and then you can simply project from there. So I'm going to look at whether there are questions. Uh, let's see at this point. Q&A we have, OK. Uh, is it possible to use it with a 2D file? Yes. Uh, we can import AutoCAD. So we can import DXF file, DWG files, and those uh, so essentially, those are the lines that you can simply select those and, and then add them to your projections, no problem. Does it work with Vertec or other, others' hardware? Actually, right now, we're using, uh, so we're only uh, interfacing with Vertec, uh, sorry, with, with Tracer M, but we do plan on, on uh, having uh, interfacing with other hardware. And we're already uh, speaking with some of the hardware pro providers in order to to have that interface. Are there any other questions? OK. All right, well, then that pretty much concludes it. Uh, so thank you for attending. If you have any question, uh, you can send them to support at buildersoftware.com. You can also download a free trial from our website. And I hope to see you at our next webinar. Thank you.